Hi, this is Nick Haraz of Creative 111, here with Boris FX to talk to you about Sapphire's pixel sort inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. Inside of Sapphire 2019.5, which is available now as a free update, for anyone who has 2019 with an active upgrade and support contract, the preset browser actually allows you to preview any effect on video instead of just a still frame. In order to see this in action, I'm going to hop over from my assembly workspace over to my effects workspace. And in the effects tab, I'm going to do a search for dissolve pixel altogether. Noticing under my Sapphire transitions, the S dissolve pixel sort. I'll take that transition and apply it center over the first two clips here in my Premiere Pro timeline. I'm going to select the transition. And if we press Shift-5 to go to Effect Controls, we'll be able to see its parameters. First off, if you look at the effect, we have several different types of pixel sorts to choose, both linear, radial, and circular. And you'll notice that each of these same effects are also available to you in the effect version of pixel sort. Now let's head back to pixel sort linear. I want to head to the top of the effect and choose to load a preset, or I'll head into Sapphire's preset browser. The incredible part about this is for both transitions and effects, there are a number of presets available to get you started off to learn what this effect can do. I'm going to head over to Falling Sort, and you'll notice that I've also marked it as a favorite. If I head it over here to the Favorites tab, it will be isolated and make it easier for me to access it at a later point in time. For those of you who use Sapphire already, you might notice that now that video previews are supported and I'm able to see a preview of how that pixel sort will look as a transition over the two clips in my timeline. This is looking great. Let me choose to load this inside of Premiere Pro and a reflection of that pixel sort in my timeline. Another great thing about pixel sort linear is the ability to switch the sort angle. Currently it's set to 90 degrees and I'll just scrub that value over to the right in order to change the direction of my pixel sort. Inside of both Premiere Pro and After Effects comes your ability to keyframe each of these parameters as well as even change the sort type to use a different type of blend mode for how it interacts with the pixels in your image. For instance, from changing it from monochrome to hue, I'm going to get a much different result there in the linear pixel sort. I'd also encourage you to take some of these values and keyframe them over time to get other results. Now let me take another version of S pixel sort and apply it to over the second and third clip in my timeline, moving my playhead over so I'll be able to get a preview of the dissolve pixel sort effect. I'll quickly select that and under effect controls, change the effect type from pixel sort linear over to pixel sort circular. In order to change the position of the circle, which is currently in the center of the frame, I'm going to scrub the X value of the circle center so that it's over to the left. With that value of a thousand, I'll move my playhead to the beginning of the transition, select it, and click the stopwatch to add a keyframe. I'll then drag my playhead inside effect controls close to the end of the transition, make sure it's still selected in the timeline and change that value from 1000 over to about 2200. You'll notice that a keyframe is automatically added there inside of your effect controls. Moving my playhead now back to the beginning of the timeline, I'll press return to quickly render these in full quality playback. On my keyboard, press control tilde in order to have a full screen playback. And preview both of these pixel sort dissolves in real time. Looking great. I'll escape out of here and let's take a look at the pixel sort effect inside of Adobe After Effects. Here inside of After Effects, we're going to apply a version of the S pixel sort effect to the clip that you see in front of us. I'm just going to apply it to the clip by dragging it right into the composition panel. You'll see that it's set to that linear pixel sort. And of course, you have the options of choosing between radial and circular, 
like we saw with the transition. Now, one really important value to keep in mind specifically with the effect is the threshold value. If you hold down the command or control key when you're on a Mac or PC, you can scrub the threshold value in very small increments. Shift will increase this quite a bit, but really we wanna remain somewhere between the values of both zero and one. As I get closer to zero, more pixels are now involved in the pixel sort. As it gets closer to one, less are involved. Let's actually change that sort angle and value. And for you to see just a few different ways of using pixel sort in non-traditional ways, I already have a few effects applied onto this clip, including S vignettes, a S underscore cartoon effect, which is giving this quite a various look, followed by the S film effect. If I take this now and then bring down the threshold quite a bit to have less pixel sort values, I can create some versatile looking pieces of art here. Now let's look at some traditional pixel sort examples specifically with the effect is your ability to have it almost like a glitch. Here in my pixel sort in and out mask, I will unsolo the clip that's currently selected so I can see my top clip. And let's hit the space bar so we can see the end results. And here we have a number of various things going on, including an actual digital damage effect, but included in that is a sRGB time warp, giving that isolation, some scaling effects, and the actual pixel sort, which is changing values over time. In order to accomplish this, let me actually turn off my above clip and we'll take a look at the first clip here in the timeline by soloing it. And I'll show you that by itself with no effects, all that's occurring right here is a various scaling effect that's happening between the original scale of the clip and scales up to a value of 200 to 300%. I then combine this with a version of S pixel sort. So I'll just enable that. And in order to see how this effect jumps around between various values, you can see that the effect itself changes between the value of linear circular over time, and it's mixed there with that scaling result. Now the pixel sort itself also changes its sort angle when set to linear. And you can see here that that's also been keyframed over time with the lit up stopwatch. In order to provide different pixel sorts inside where the person is selected and outside, I used a mocha mask with the built-in sapphire mocha on the pixel sort effect. In order to see the mask that I drew, I'm gonna go into Edit Mocha. And inside you can see that I have currently 11 layers. If I select the first layer, you'll see here that it's actually located later in my timeline, and it only exists for a certain amount of time. When that mask is lit up, you'll see here, the effect itself is set to be outside of my selection. Same thing if I select the second layer here in my timeline, you'll notice that this mask lasts for a longer period of time. And this was fairly simple to draw, specifically using the magnetic layer tool. As I flip between the various layers, you'll see them isolated to certain periods of time, causing that type of glitch to work inside and outside of the mask when we go inside of After Effects. Clicking that off, we'll see here the end result there with the pixel sort effect now added, jumping in and outside of the masks I drew in Sapphire Mocha and combined with the scaling effect as well as the rotation value of the sort angle when it's set to linear. Combine this effect with a few others, I added an S lens flare along with an S time warp RGB. I didn't just stop there, I actually combined this with several other images that were blended over top of this in order to give the final results. In fact, you can see an adjustment layer set with a vignette to a very vibrant and saturated red color and several layers that are mixed in between various blend modes to mix that background image with a foreground image where in some cases there is no pixel sort value and in other cases where there is a dramatic one. And once again, here's a final example of that effect. Let's say how we can now integrate pixel sort with an example with Mocha Pro and the linear color key from the Boris effects library. In this particular pixel sort limited example, 
what we wanted to do is isolate the pixel sort as well as some of the actual dark glows, the digital glitch, onto just the lady here in the foreground. Now this shot provides a little bit of complication in that we need to do through a number of different stages, we're going to isolate our subject here. In order to show you a few of these steps from scratch, I'm gonna to go to the project panel and into my clips, I'm gonna select the clip here in question and create a new composition from it. Let's trim this comp down to two seconds for demonstration purposes and right click within the work area to trim that comp work area. First thing I'm gonna do is remove any part of the shot that I really don't need to isolate. And we'll see here that the subject doesn't really walk too much to the outside borders of the frame. I'll select After Effects' Shape Pen Tool and just draw a really loose mask around our subject, going back to the first point to close it out. I'll press F to do a little bit of feathering, go to the mask mode and set it to none temporarily, and just make sure that the mask here is accurate. Once I've checked that, I'll change this to Add, select the clip and press Shift Command C to move all attributes into a new composition, calling it GM for garbage mat. Let's work it now keying out the sky. In order to do this, I'll head to my effects and presets and do a search for linear. Under the Boris effects keying section, we'll see that there is the ability to add a BCC linear color key. I'll apply it to the clip and notice that the key color it's after happens to be black when we want it to be the gray within the sky. I'll select my eyedropper and click on a gray pixel and under the output mode, change from composite to show matte. Let's play around with the similarity value in order to add more of the pixels we would like to keep here with our linear color key selection, which does not happen to be the ground and then also increase the softness here within the image and a little bit of the post, add some post blur at the end of this effect. You could play around also with the alpha, alpha offset and choke in order to even get a better linear color key. Once complete, change the output mode back to composite where we can see that we've successfully keyed out the sky and have our subject. Now it's time to remove the actual grass. In order to do that, I will, with my clip selected, just press Shift Command C for housekeeping, moving all attributes and calling it linear key. Let's go to effects and presets and add a version of Mocha Pro and launch Mocha by clicking on the Mocha badge. In order to remove the actual grass here, what I'd like to do is first of all, draw just a really simple shape that's gonna track a plane on the subject. Now there's not a lot of planes here to track, but I do see in the upper left region of the blanket, I can get away with a pattern or texture over here. What I'll do is just select a really simple shape tool by going here on the square and then just clicking and dragging out that square. I can select each of the individual points and change that to land on the texture appropriately. Also press Command A to select those points, drag them in to create a smoother shape or drag it outward to keep it as rigid. Mocha Pro provides a very simple essentials panel that we're beginning to work with. And in this particular case, all we're looking to do is track the translation, scale and rotation. I'll turn off the skew, track backwards first and we can see how fast that goes move my playhead back to the point where I drew out my actual shape and track forward. Now that this track is complete, let's change the layer name to track and actually change the outline color to something different so that we can identify that. And now let's select the majority of the subject besides the actual blowing blanket and link it to our successful track. While we'll have to make some subtle adjustments throughout time, we'll be able to then have the majority of the, our selection accounted for. In order to select the majority of the shape, I'm gonna select the actual magnetic layer tool. And I'll click and start to drag a rough selection around my subject. Some handy tools here, if you use Z, you can zoom out, followed by the X key to use the hand tool and click and select 
the majority of the shape minus that blowing blanket. Now I can be a lot looser up here with the subject at the top because I've already keyed out the sky, so I'm less worried about that. Going back to my first point to select it and then have my overall shape. Press Command A to select and maybe pull inwards to have a little bit more curves. And if I select this layer number two, which is a different color, and decide to link it to the track, you can see that the shape at least keeps up with your first initial track. The best part that I love about Mocha Pro is that we can make an adjustment on another frame, come to some points that are now off, select them and drag inward, and you'll see that it's going to interpolate between the first green keyframe and the next. The best part is this is all going to translate over into After Effects. If I close out Mocha Pro and choose Save, you'll see here that if I go over to my matte settings and choose to apply the matte, all the shapes that I drew inside of Mocha Pro are taken into account. I do want it to ignore the one shape that is currently tracked over here. So I'll click on Visible Layers and make sure that it ignores that track and is only referencing Layer 2. Of course, there is more work to be done, but here we can see that we can easily select and isolate our subject from our background. If I go into the final pixel sort limited example, looking here at all of the layers here in my timeline, first of all, I'll solo the first background layer, which happens to have no effects on it if we look at effect controls. Just above it, if I add to the solo the linear key, you'll see that if I look at it by itself, that there's just a pixel sort effect combined with a digital damage and that Mocha Pro effect that was used to key out the background here. I then combined on the top adjustment layer a few additional effects, including a glow, a dark glow effect. In fact, if I twirl it down and choose to load a preset from the list of all inside of Mocha, we used Jamaican Me Crazy, that's marked as a favorite, that was loaded into After Effects combined with a S vignette to add a little bit of vignetting around the edges of our image. If we press the spacebar to preview this effect, we can see that with the help of Mocha Pro and Boris's tool set combined with S pixel sort, we can get some incredible effects. And that is how versatile pixel sort is, both at the transition and effect level. If you're interested in trying any of these products from Boris Effects that were mentioned today, please use my discount code creative1-11 in order to get a 15% off price on any of these suites. I'm Nick from Creative 111 and stay tuned for more videos coming out on our YouTube channel.